So what? Sorry, that was in the way. I was leaning back on it. What is up? Uh, what is up with reluctance? I'm gonna just get right into it today. Uh, not a lot of time to sit there and chit chat. And honestly, you're not here to talk about me. You're here to talk about magnetism. So before we get into the whiteboard, which I'll spend some time in, let's talk a little bit about reluctance. Last week I talked about MMF. MMF is the magnetomotive force. So it is to magnetism what EMF is to electricity, meaning that there's some sort of source pushing this stuff out, whether it's an electricity which is pushing the electrons, which is getting the current flow, or with MMF, it's pushing out those magnetic lines of flux, the phi, the Webers, the, the stuff that we're gonna talk about in greater detail next week. This week we're talking about reluctance, and with the name itself, you can guess what I'm gonna to talk to you about. It is to magnetism, what resistance is to electricity. So electricity, electricity. Um, so basically what reluctance is, is the opposition to the setting up of flux lines. And when we're talking about reluctance, we're generally talking about the core. Because what will happen is if you have a bunch of wire wrapped around something, you can create a magnetic field. We'll talk about that in another video. I'll go over this whole left hand rule thing and get into great detail about that. But what we have is a core, and what we'll, with the core we have what's called permeability, which again is another video at another time, but just Cole's note version. It's the ability of a material to condense those magnetic lines of flux. So if you have something that's reluctant, then you've got something that doesn't want to set up those lines of flux. Air does not want to set up lines of flux. It lets the, the lines of flux go wherever it wants. Iron loves to set up lines of flux, therefore it has a low reluctance. So in this video, I'm just gonna jump around in the math a bit, show you the formulas that are being used, and we're gonna kind of fart around with that and, and play around with it. So let's jump into the whiteboard and talk about what the flux is going on with reluctance. Okay, here we go. One of my best drawings ever. I've got a EMF here. I've got a coil wrapped around an iron core. Basically what I've set up here is something that could be used as an electromagnet. Now this iron core is gonna have some reluctance. It's not gonna have a lot of it because it actually does like taking those magnetic lines of flux and combining them together, but it does have reluctance. So we're gonna learn how we can figure out what that is mathematically. So here's the formula that we're gonna use. RM, which is just a fancy way of saying reluctance, is equal to FM, which we learned last week is your magnetomotive force or your MMF. And then we have this one, phi. That's basically the amount of flux lines you have. And I'll talk about that more next week when I get into the whole phi and what, what it is, the, the Webers and all that fun stuff. So as always, the best thing we can do is let's throw some numbers at it and see what happens. I've got, let's say that I've got an MMF. I'm creating with this current that's flowing through these number of turns, I'm creating 7,600 ampere turns. Let's say that that creates 50 Webers of flux. So that's actually quite a bit of flux when you think about it because each Weber has 100 million lines of flux to it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use what we know, these values to determine what the reluctance of this circuit is. So what we'll do here is RM, which is what we're looking for, is equal to FM, which is your 7600 divided by your Webers or 50 Webers there. That then works out to be 152 ampere turns per Weber. So that's just using the actual um, formula itself. We didn't have to move anything around. We didn't have to transpose. Everything was easy peasy. Let's see what happens here now. Let's say that I've got 12 amps. I don't have the number of turns. I don't know what that is here. I do know that my reluctance is 125, but I and I do know that my Webers or my phi is 36 Webers. So what do we do? Well, we know we're, we're gonna use this formula here. So we can use this reluctance, sorry, this reluctance and this phi, this reluctance and this phi to figure out what my MMF is. I also know that my MMF is equal to the number of turns times the amps. So once I have this calculated, I can just move this boop over to here. I don't have this, but I do have the amps and I can go ahead and calculate from there. So let's go ahead. We're just gonna, we could also punch the number in here and we can calculate this out. We did a little bit of transposing. RM is equal to FM over phi. RM is equal to N times I, which is just replacing that FM here with this part of the formula. And I can just go ahead and plug all the numbers in as I need them. So 125 
is equal to N, which I don't know, times I, which would be your FM anyways, divided by 36. 125 times 36 is equal to N times 12, cross multiply. Then I end up getting one, I need to get 12 alone, so I just divide that out. So it's 125 times 36 divided by 12 gives me N, and N is 375 turns. That's a tricky question, granted, but the nice thing about YouTube is, guess what? You can hit pause, go back, and see what I was talking about, and then go from there again, and over and over and over again. So remember, I say this all the time, and I will continue to say it forever. Make sure you use that pause button liberally as you're watching this. All right, let's figure this one out. We're gonna do it again, except this time we have the number of turns, but we don't have the amps. So we start with the formula that we have. RM is equal to N times I over phi, or FM over phi, same thing. I, we just move this around a little bit, and we get I is equal to the, res the reluctance times the phi is equal to N. All I did was transpose to move this around. I wanted to get I alone, so I'm not gonna go into how that all worked out, but if you need help with that, put something in the comments down below. I'll do a little thing up on it. So I is equal to 22 times 72 divided by 880. Boom, I is equal to 1.8 amps. And there you go, that is reluctance. Now, when we're talking about that, remember that that 22 is just telling me how reluctant this core is to the setting up of flux lines. Not too crazy, again, everybody makes magnetism out to be way more difficult than it needs to be. So there you go, it's that easy. I know I always say it's that easy and it's obviously not that easy, but I can't stress enough, and I said it earlier in the whiteboard, <laughs> hit the pause button, go back, watch it again until it makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, go down into the comments below. I might not get back right away, though I'm trying to get better at that, but somebody usually does. And it's a great community here at the Electric Academy, so make sure you're getting that stuff in there and we'll go from there. Next week, we're gonna talk more about that phi, what phi is, and we'll get a little bit deeper into it and we'll fool around with the math as well. Have a great week, see you next Thursday. Stay classy.